Welcome to our feature clip showcasing the Interactive Analysis Report Designer for SAP Business One, Release 9.2. The Interactive Analysis Report Designer is a Microsoft Excel-based analytics and reporting tool using a Microsoft Excel plugin and SAP Business One HANA views as data sources. It does not replace the existing pivot table based interactive analysis, but provides an additional reporting solution allowing users to build reports leveraging the powerful features of Microsoft Excel. It gives users more flexibility to manipulate reports in Excel, providing a better view for decision-making outcomes. As an introduction to the functional overview of the designer, at the top of the screen we offer the basic functions for creating and saving reports, managing your repository and running the reports in real time. To the left we have our data sources that we can choose from and below the calculation types for creating subtotals, for example. The middle section contains the working area, which enables you to define the layout of your report, and then to the right we have the areas where you can define groupings, sorting, and your filtering options. So let's review a business scenario where you would leverage this type of reporting functionality. Jason Butler is a sales manager at OEC Computers, and Jason regularly reviews the profits and revenues for his product series, JB Office Print, that he manages at OEC Computers. Jason often needs to drill down to the figures by customer and by year. So how would we create a report to meet Jason's reporting requirements for OEC Computers? Let's now create a really simple report that will meet Jason's reporting requirements. We are now logged in to SAP Business One, and I can simply start the designer by navigating to Tools, and then selecting Interactive Analysis Report Designer. In the background, Excel Reporter will launch, and once we open Excel Reporter, we can see that it includes the Interactive Analysis plugin because the Interactive Analysis tab will be visible. To create our report, we simply select New Report Query. We now need to select our data source. So from here we're going to select sales, multi-document scenarios, and then profitability analysis, because we want to be able to review the profitability of the JB Office Print series, and this is the query we will use as our data source. To confirm this, we'll simply select OK. Now we can see the data source panel. We want to analyze item profit and revenue by customer and by year. To do this, we first start with the item data source. We then drag our item code into our work area. We now need to define the size of our work area, and for this report we're going to select 10 columns and 10 rows. You can now drag your relevant fields into this working area to create your report and you can always increase your working area if required. We're now going to select item description, just so the item code is a little bit more self-explanatory. Now we would like to group our items by customer, and to do this we select the item code row, and then we move into our group and section area. We then click on the group drop-down list, and we're going to add what's called a child group. We're going to group our items by customer. So to do this, we need to select business partner and then business partner code. The system automatically adds the business partner code, but it's not in the cell that we want it to be presented in our report. So to move it, we simply cut and paste it into the area we would like it to be and we're going to also define a title for this column, which will be Customer ID. We're then going to add the customer name. Now we can actually add the measures for our report, such as the gross profit and new sales amount. So we select the column that we would like our measures to exist in, and we select our gross profit measure, 
and again we can change the title of this column to profit and then we want our net sales amount which will represent our revenue and lastly we would like to determine the gross profit margin we can use Excel's calculation tools in order to determine the margin percentage so in this column we're going to define it as margin percentage and now we need to actually create a calculation which will calculate the margin percentage. We can't actually directly reference the cell within the interactive analysis designer so we need a function to wrap around the cell for our calculation. So for example if I type in IA which refers to interactive analysis we have a function called IA cell reference and this is going to wrap around the cell we want to use in our calculation which in this case is going to be our gross profit which is F4. So I then simply type in F4. We then want to divide our profit by our net sales amount which is G4 but again we need to wrap this around using our cell function. Then I can define the cell that I want to include in my calculation and then we simply times this by 100. And now we have defined our calculation for our margin percentage. We can now do some formatting using Excel's formatting features to make our report a little bit more presentable. For example, we might want to highlight our title and make them bold and in italics. We're now going to add a calculation to show the subtotal of our profitability. So under the calculation area, we can simply drag the calculation sum and we need to make sure that we're going to reference our gross profit cell which is F4 so we need to ensure that we reference the appropriate cell for our calculation and then we're going to call this cell name this cell subtotal likewise we can do this for a grand total so if I name my cell grand total again we simply drag our calculation sum into the cell that we would like our grand total to be and we ensure that we reference the correct cell for our calculation. Now I'm just going to format these cells so they're easily visible in our report. If I ran this report now we would see all items but in this scenario Jason Butler only wants to review the JB Office Print series. So in order to narrow the field down, we simply filter by item code. To filter at a row level, for example, we need to navigate to the bottom right area and then we need to click on the item settings for group one. We then select filter and then we select the dimension of our filter, which in this case is going to be item. The attribute will be item code we're going to choose the operator in because we're going to select the items we want to include in our report and then lastly we actually select the values of those items which happen to be the first three items in our list. So now we've narrowed the field down which will allow us to choose the items within a particular range. The next thing we're going to do is add an extra row into our working area because this is going to include the posting year. So if I select the cell above my profit column and then I select document date, I'm going to drag the document year data source into that area. To show the document year not only for profit but also for my revenue and my margin percentage, I can span this field over the columns F, G and H and to simply do this I go over to my group and section area and I can drag this slider across the columns that I would like to span this particular source across. So now document year will appear for both profit, revenue and also for my margin percentage. Finally, we want to be able to sort by document year and to do this we select column under the sort area. Here we've got group by document year, we double click on the settings, we select sorting, we choose our attribute document year and we would like to sort our document year in ascending order. 
So now we've defined our report requirements, let's run the report and see the results. We go back to our interactive analysis tab and simply select run report. Now this actually opens up an additional Excel window to display the report and in this Excel window it does not contain the interactive analysis plugin. As you can see the interactive analysis tab is no longer visible. So in this particular report we can now see our item details which are sorted by item and filtered by customer, the specific item range, we can also see the corresponding project and revenue and margin percentage across our document year in ascending order. We can also see our subtotal and our grand total amount across our report. Lastly, we now save our report into SAP Business One for users to run from directly within the system. To do this, we go back to our interactive reports analysis designer. We go into Repository Management and we're going to save our report in a folder under Sales, Multi-Document Scenarios. And here I can create a new folder which I'm going to call Item Profit. And now I can save my report under this particular folder. All I have to do now is select Save as Report. I select the folder that I would like to save it under and I simply create a report name such as JB Office Print Series Profit Analysis So the next time you have logged into SAP Business One and you want to run your report, you simply navigate to Tools. You scroll down to Interactive Analysis Reports, Sales. Under Multi-Document Scenarios, we've created our Item Profit folder. And here we have our JB Office Print Series Profit Analysis Report. And by clicking on this, this will open up an Excel window of the actual report based in real time. So here we've actually demonstrated a very simple way to create a report using our interactive analysis designer tool and the powerful features of Microsoft Excel. Thank you for your time today and make sure you check out our What's New feature clips for SAP Business One Release 9.2.